we're going to look at a new idea and that idea is entropy so before we actually explain what this word means let's go back to something we've seen before so I'm drawing a particle diagram and I'm drawing a particle diagram to represent a solid now if I heat that solid it'll move past its melting point and form a liquid if I continue to heat that it will move past its boiling point and form a gas now entropy describes how disordered each of these systems are if we have a look at our solid the solid is a very ordered a very organized system as we move through a liquid to a gas it becomes more disordered and entropy is the measure of disorder So the more disordered a system is, the greater its entropy. So in terms of entropy, a gas has a greater entropy than a liquid, which has a greater entropy than a solid. And we give a symbol for entropy, and that symbol is a capital S. And the units are frequently joules per Kelvin per mole so let's go back to our um, example here and let's have a look at what happens um, in terms of plotting that on a graph so if we were to plot entropy um, against temperature on this graph we would see a graph that looks like this okay so at this point on the graph the substance is a solid at this point a liquid and at this point it's a gas so what we see is as temperature increases entropy increases and <coughs> that's um, because as the particles in the substances gain more energy they're going to have more ways that they can move the more ways that they can move the greater their entropy and we also see these straight points on the graph these are the phase changes so where we're going from a solid to a liquid or in this case from a liquid to a gas or indeed we could go backwards as we decrease temperature from a gas to a liquid from a liquid to a solid and We notice that there is a large increase in entropy, a massive increase in entropy um, at the phase change. So the um, movement on the y-axis relative on here is very large compared to how it has been up to this point. We also see that this, the boiling um, phase change, has a larger increase in entropy than the melting phase change. Uh, and this is because there is more disorder on boiling and that makes sense if we have a look at our particle diagram here the amount of disorder going from a solid to a liquid we've just rearranged the particles there's more degrees of movement they can move around this time rather than just vibrating on a fixed point however when we go from a liquid to a gas there is a lot more disorder there's lots more ways that these particles and directions these particles can move in so that explains entropy in terms of state let's have a look at entropy in terms of uh, types of substance so if we take 
two substances. I'm sure you recognize this substance here. Uh, this is a diagram of one sheet of graphite. Now graphite is a very, very ordered system. So graphite has a very low entropy, and in fact the entropy of graphite is very small indeed. There's only really one other naturally occurring substance with a lower entropy than that, and that's diamond, which has an entropy of, my, of 2 joules per mole per kelvin. I drew uh, graphite because it's easier for me to draw. So that has a very, very low entropy. If we take another carbon containing compound, and that's gaseous carbon dioxide, I'm just going to draw three carbon dioxide molecules. It's a gas. It contains more than one element. There's more vibration in the bonds than there are in graphite. So this has a high entropy, 214 joules per mole per Kelvin. So as substances at room temperature become gases, they're more likely to be uh, disordered. Um, we could also say that the um, larger the molecular mass, uh, the larger the entropy as well. If we have a look at some organic compounds, then um, the entropy for butane will be larger than the entropy for ethane because the molecular mass is increased and also because there are more bonds and, and more ways of rearranging. So, if we also have a look, about, a look at what happens during a chemical reaction. So, during a chemical reaction, let's have a look at the uh, reaction between nitrogen and ammonia. The reaction between nitrogen and ammonia uh, is the basis of the harbour process and it sees one nitrogen molecule reacting with three hydrogen molecules. They're all in the gaseous state and it produces two of these molecules. So it produces two ammonia molecules. What's happened during this reaction is we have gone from four distinct gaseous species. So this word species here, we use to describe the components in our reaction. Um, one nitrogen species, three hydrogen species. Um, in this case, they happen to all be molecules, but we use the word species because uh, species can describe atoms, molecules, ions, and so on. And if we have a look here, we see two species. So in this reaction, we would expect to see a decrease in entropy because we have gone from a greater number of species to a smaller number of species. So we've gone from a more disordered state to a less disordered state or the order has increased the disorder has decreased so if we just review what we've looked at so far about explaining entropy then we have got the idea that a gas has a greater disorder and therefore a greater entropy than a liquid than a solid we know that very ordered substances like graphite which have strong bonds and the very regular lattice structure have very low entropies. We know that um, substances with a larger molecular mass have a greater disorder than substances with a lower one. And we know that the number of species in a reaction uh, explains whether or not a reaction has an increase or decrease in entropy. So let's look at how we would do uh, a couple of example calculations. The first thing we need to know is our equation.
So, delta S is the change in entropy. And that is equal to the sum, I should have drawn this a little bit clearer for a video, the sum of the entropy of the product minus the sum of the entropy of the reactants. Let's have a look at two real examples. So, this reaction represents the decomposition of calcium carbonate. If we heat calcium carbonate, we will um, produce calcium oxide and gaseous carbon dioxide. Now, before we do one of these calculations, it's worth us looking and seeing, are we expecting to see an increase or a decrease in entropy? Two ways we can exp explain this. First of all, we've gone from one species to two species. So we're expecting probably to see an increase in entropy. And we've gone from a solid to a solid and a gas. And the fact that we've produced a gas means that we're expecting a large increase in entropy. Now, I'm going to write down what the entropy values are here. You would normally be given these in a table of data. So calcium carbonate has that entropy value. Calcium oxide has that entropy value. And there's the entropy value, entropy value for carbon dioxide. So if we look at our equation at the top, the entropy change of the products, the sum of the products, which is this and this, minus the sum of the entropy change of the reactants. And that will give us an entropy change of plus 161 joules per Kelvin per mole, as we expected. We've gone from one species to two species, from a solid to a solid and a gas. So quite a significant change in entropy. Let's have a look at our second example. So this is the reaction of magnesium with two molecules of hydrochloric acid. I'm going to put the state symbols in as well. This one's a little bit harder to explain, um, or to predict. We've gone from two, three species, one, two, three species, to two species. So that would suggest it's a decrease in entropy. But we've gone from a solid and a two aqueous uh, species to an aqueous and a gaseous species. However, this is quite a small um, uh, molecular mass gaseous species. So it's probably going to have a lower entropy than most gases would normally have. So let's find the... Um, so this time I'm just going to uh, say the entropy and give the units there. So I've divided this, this row by the entropy rather than writing the units every time. Well, we find that this has an entropy of 33. Remember, you're not expected to know these. You will normally be given these. I've just uh, taken these off a data sheet myself. Okay, so in fact, um, remember uh, last time... Uh, for carbon dioxide, actually, gas is carbon dioxide. We had uh, a entropy of 214. So hydrogen's got uh, just over half uh, of the entropy of carbon dioxide in this case. So um, as expected, it's got a lower entropy because it's a lower um, molecular mass. So let's plug it into our equation. Delta S is equal to the entropy change, sum of the entropy change of the product. Here are the products. minus the sum of the entropy change of the reactant. So 33 plus, and in this case, there are two molecules of hydrochloric acid. So we have two times the molar entropy. And all of that comes out as minus 117 joules per Kelvin per mole. So in fact, this reaction has seen a decrease in entropy. Okay, thank you very much.